You can see her art all up and down the East Coast in world-renowned museums like the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., and the High Museum in Atlanta. But lucky for us, folk artist Mary Proctor still has a studio here in Tallahassee's Railroad Square, and she has opened up her home to give us a glimpse of her works and to share with us what inspires her. This one right here, um, for we walk by faith and not by sight. What I was trying to say and what I'm saying, you know, as you notice the artists, they're looking up, right? Because they have faith. They have faith in who they're looking up to. The God of the universe, he's the one going to help us through this. Are your pieces like parables? Yes, they are parables. They are like parables and some of them are stories or some of them sometimes I just sit down and write things. Yeah, a lot of them are parables. I would call myself a missionary, and, and, and the art comes out. But a missionary is a person that wants to keep up the good things. My mission is to show them the good, produce the good, that they could see the good. You were inspired to produce your art by your grandmother. Tell us, how did that come about? You know, my mom was a little too young to have a child. So my grandmother raised me from a child, a baby. And being that I was one of the ones that, that left to stay with my grandmother, she would tell me, I want you to write to my children. And she bought the paper and pencil to me. I would go in a corner. I didn't want her to tell me nothing she wanted to say. I would just try to impress her. And I'd write to her seven children. I sat down, I read the letters to her, and I was making grandma happy. Thank God she took me in. I love my mom, wonderful lady, but my grandmother took me in and I started writing. This is paint I made Grandma happy. You see, I did pencils. I love to write for Grandma, and I wanted to make her happy. Around in my yard, all I wanted to do was remember a little lady that raised me on some values. And she would not want me to say she was perfect, but her love was perfect. Have you had other jobs in your life? When you got to doing the art, did you find this was your calling? For 10 years or so, I was a nurse aide. When I lost the feeling, I couldn't stand up on my leg no more. I couldn't get a settlement to help me. So that's when I started the flea market from there. When my grandmother passed in 1994 and 95, I started painting all around me. Everything, painting up the stuff in the flea market. And folks would buy my stuff going, Mary Proctor, what are you doing? I want to buy that. You done painted it. I said, painted it? I'm just writing. I said, it helped relieve me about my grandmother. So I decided to write on everything around me. Guess what happened? That's when that New York owner came along and gave me $5,000 for those doors. But yeah, I started from tragedy, and this is where I made for, for 25 years. What is a folk artist? I found out that folk art is not really what you should call a folk artist. I could represent what I think they're saying about a folk artist. A folk artist is someone that have never been trained and they call us outsiders artists. As I've been on the road for the last 25 years, I've met truly great individuals. They have been through some tragedy in their life, as I have, and art was given to them to relieve them of the pain of their mother, their brother, their sister. My pain came from relieving me of my grandmother, aunt and uncle. We become people that heal each other. The real artist in life is those who pick up something, always had a childhood call, they pick up something like me, and they take it and they make something because that is their call. I believe art should be spoken. Artists now in this century should be talking about why did I paint that. Artists can tell you I came from this place or that place. And people see your, they see your struggle. And then they hear your struggle. Then they help people to overcome what you've struggled through. My cars, I lost a son in a fatal car accident, which was Christopher, and I lost him in 2011. And I did the car because I wanted to remember him and things that I cannot tell young people about driving, education, of educate yourself to be good and drive careful. Give me some words of wisdom that you would like to share. I've learned that struggle makes you strong, that struggle makes you better. Don't think that you beyond struggle. It's hard. But it's always but for a purpose. I get it before the gate. It may be dark at times, but hold on, the sun will shine.
Look at the piece on the side right here. And it says, look and see the angel is you. And this is one of my workshops and I tell people to bring their own material. I will take this, take it to school like this here, empty with nothing, nothing. You'll make a piece with your stuff. You might have your grandma's stuff. And you decided, well, you know, I want to remember grandma or uncle or aunt or my wife, or, and this is her dress or whatever you want to do. And we decorated, we decorated. This is called Look and See the Angel is You. Some of the pieces I've done with people, I was amazed at some of the stuff they brought there. And for you know it, you have a beautiful piece that collected with your material that your family can share. I found out about art. Once you create something, you feel good about yourself. You say, dog, man, look what I did. I made that, like me, with my art. It don't matter what anybody say about me. I got so many problems 60 years old. <laughs> I can't even tell you. But I feel like a child, and I make myself to be the best I can be so that I can feel good about me. What is the most unusual thing that you've used in a piece of art? Um, oh, <laughs> something I really regret. I sold a lady some occupied Japan dolls. I found out the dolls were worth thousands. <laughs> I didn't look, now I'm looking, but I didn't look to see that those dolls were so valuable that I tore them up and put it on that door and that was like, oh my God. And I put glue on it so it couldn't get it off. Through your art, what do you want to teach people? I want to teach people to live on earth. I believe you live here good and thereafter you live good. I believe that you treat people best you can. And I want to say none of us are perfect. None of us have ever been perfect. We made mistakes. I want people to get up and understand. Wipe it off. Ask for forgiveness. And go on. Tell us your proudest moment with your art. I've been on the road for 25 years. The proudest moment was to meet people and they tell me they love my work and buy it. That's what the proudest moment. It goes back to seeing people happy and enjoying what I've been given to do.